Commons Secretary Jeremy Hunt is expected to make a statement in the Commons today and could announce sanctions against Iran. And it comes after a British-flagged oil tanker was seized in the Gulf on Friday, with Iran claiming it was violating international maritime rules. Theresa May is also chairing a meeting of the Emergency Response Cobra Committee to work out how to de-escalate tensions in the region. We're joined now by Defence Minister Tobias Elwood. This is all very frightening. It is, and it shows an escalation of uh, tensions in the region, but also a wider to that, I think, an indication of where the types of threats that we're dealing with in, in modern day are changing. Uh, we've moved away from a Cold War uh, attack, you know, one against a major country, to much more diverse and complex mm -hmm. threats, and this is an example of one of them. You're quoting the papers in several places saying, as our Royal Navy is too small to counter the Iran threat. That needs, should be qualified. That is absolutely right as we enter this new era of instability. If we want to continue playing a role on the international stage, given the diversity of threats, not least with the Army, Air Force and Navy, but also with cyber and, of course, space, then we need to invest more in our armed forces. But that also includes the Navy. Let's not forget 95% of our trade moves around the world. We have a responsibility, a duty to look after the British flagged ships. What we've seen in Iran, off the, uh, in the Straits of Hormuz, is a spike in activity in, in uh, the threats that are being imposed there. We're reacting to it and we're sending extra uh, assets there. So what's Jeremy Hunt going to say today and, and how do we de-escalate this and get, get to the point where we get this shit back? Well, there's a COBRA meeting, as you touched on beforehand, so just that'll be the, led by the Prime Minister and the Defence Secretary will be there putting in the operational uh, options too. The USA have five or six warships uh, in the region, including an aircraft carrier, and in the middle of June, uh, two of their tankers were attacked. One of them set ablaze. So this is something that affects us all. It requires an international cooperation, uh, but also, most importantly, recognition that there's actually a bigger geostrategic challenge facing here. That's the reason why Iran is doing these things. So why do, is because of other factors sorry, that are taking if the, place. If those American warships are there, why didn't one of them come to the aid of this ship? Because clearly this was going to happen at some point. Why was there not more cohesive coordination of, of, the, uh, of what's in those straits there? To be able because, to... Simply because of the size of the straits. We have to recognise this is 100 nautical miles. If the fast vessels that the Iran Iranians are using take out a ship and immediately turn off the transponder, the bleeper that tells everybody where it is, mm. then it becomes very difficult. They then turned this particular, the, the standard, they turned it into to, to face north into Iranian waters, which then becomes very problematic as well. Absolutely, we need to send assets there. We've got an RFA tanker there, which allows the Montrose, the Kent, or indeed HMS Duncan that's heading there as well uh, to refuel at sea. But yes, when, th when activities spike around the world, mm -hmm. we have assets and we can move them forward. I make the point, though, that moving ahead, the question for the next prime minister is a very, very tough one, is to say things are changing, the world is getting more dangerous. What role does Britain want to play? Well, it's very interesting. So the next prime minister is going to be announced tomorrow. It's likely to be Boris Johnson. If one of his first priorities is to look at the geopolitical situation around Iran, de-escalate tension, is he the man to do that? Well, the, the, we have an electoral process here. Uh, the winner is that we have to back the winner. That's absolutely right. Will you right. back it? Will you stay in your job? Well, he will be the Prime happen? Minister. I think it's every MP's duty to get behind this Prime Minister, not least because of the myriad of other problems which we spend an awful lot of time mm -hmm. discussing. Ultimately, uh, we need to look at some of these bigger issues. The first job of any Prime Minister is security of the nation and our interests. And that includes making sure that our trade and our prosperity can continue. Is he One the sort of, of figurehead we need at a stage where things are so uncomfortable and destable there? Is he the sort of figurehead that can calm things down? Because like you right? mentioned Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe as part of potentially the negotiating process and the way he described her work out there was inaccurate and some argue is partly why she's still the in jail. process... Yeah, she's still in jail. Let's see what the result will be. It's pointing towards Boris Johnson. I, make, I think all uh, MPs should be absolutely committed to making sure that we support the Prime Minister, support Britain uh, in making our mark, not just in the Middle East, but also domestically as well. Do you, think, do you think he can, then, if it is him? I mean, you say you're going to support him, but do you think that this is, he's the right person to lead us through this, this, sort of, this very difficult, tricky situation? I, I'll absolutely give him my full support, and uh, as I'm doing now, as I've commented over the weekend, um, I will also make my views as to what, humbly, I think, you know, where the direction of travel we should go. I'm not the only one. Penny Morden, I hope, will keep her job. She's doing a terrific job uh, in defence. She's, she's fairly new there. I know she wants to absolutely stay there. Mm -hmm. She's somebody who, as I'm sorry, didn't actually participate 
participate in the leadership contest itself. But absolutely, she's providing that stability and will provide that sense of advice that you need. She will speak her mind around the Cabinet table. As far as I understand, he's not committed to more defence spending, though, as well as Jeremy Hunt has. He also is insisted and backs a no deal as a way out of Brexit. You don't. Would you still feel comfortable to serve in his cabinet? Well, let's just tear that, take those two issues separately. The first thing he's going to do is get a very serious security briefing, more detailed than anybody else will receive. He'll not only understanding uh, nuclear capability and so forth, I think that will be a huge wake-up call where he will recognise, and, and Iran is just an example of that, as just to how diverse and complicated our world has become. We've got a rising China, a resurgent Russia. Extremism hasn't disappeared. Mm. We're making our mark. I mean, the criticism about our armed forces, I defend our armed forces. Mm. We're involved in over 20 operations around the world. We're doing upstream work, humanitarian work, stabilisation work, as well as war fighting. We are making our mark. But ultimately, if we want to continue doing that, then absolutely we need to invest more in our forces. Are you forces. avoiding answering the Prime whether you'll stay in his cabinet, even though you don't back no deal, because you want to give him a chance right. and maybe resign later? I was trying to sort of <laughs> not avoid no deal, but uh, absolutely my uh, you know, energy is about our defence uh, sure. posture. You speak about no deal. What does no deal mean? It means leaving without a deal with the EU, right. as far as I understand it. I'm sorry to break it, but there is no such thing as no deal. Well, okay, Boris if... Johnson thinks there is, and he says we'll do that on October no, the 31st. No, he, he actually said there's a million to one chance of us leaving without a deal. Let's just take that apart. If you're the EU and I'm uh, Britain, and I say, right, 31st of, of October, no deal, I'm out that door. What's going to happen to our financial services? What's going to happen to our European arrest warrant? What's going to happen to Northern Ireland? Well, they Jacob, no, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who we're speaking Sorry, to later, says it'll be fine. No, I, well, I, I'm not Jacob Rees-Mogg. No. I'm making it very, very clear that all these things require citizens' rights, for example. Or what are we going to do? We're going to move to WTO terms on mm. agricultural products, 40% mm -hmm. tariffs. That, they, all they, mm. they all require negotiation. They all require a deal. So just like trying to ban New Year's Eve, for example, because we think it's too rowdy, you can't do it. We so need a relationship with I suppose so what people like this are form. arguing, that though, is, is a deal. we so haven't you... managed to get a deal which all members of right. the government accept and which Parliament has accepted. So what they're saying is if we can't get a deal which everyone accepts and gets voted through, then we'll just have to just walk away. Yes, but that's what I'm trying to explain. You don't just get to walk away. If I did walk out so the room... Can I finish this point? Because we, the trouble is we don't bother to go to the detail. We yeah. use these phrases... That's quite these grand say. terms, these, these headlines, such as walking out with no deal, I would still have to crawl back to the table and say, yeah. what, how are we going to get those medical supplies across? Because we're stockpiling right now. How are we going to actually trade? Sure. Laurie's going to go, these are all the details so that, that require a form of a relationship and a deal. This is, this is a phrase that's being used by Boris Johnson, mm -hmm. who we're, we're sort of all in agreement that we'll more than likely become Prime Minister. So you think that phrase is just smoke and mirrors, it's just posturing? Completely. Which is one of the situations is, yeah. why we're in the problem yeah. that we have in Iran at the moment. It, There's it a lot of posturing. Been, you wouldn't believe what, you know, for those of us who, who venture to try and understand this very complicated issue, I understand the passion, the anger of three years of trying to secure a deal, of why people say, I've had enough, let's just walk out. That is simply not an option for Britain that requires to have a relationship with Europe. 50% of our business is with Europe. They require to but have. Half of the some reason form why he's had so much support and may well become Prime Minister is because he said he needs that on the table. So, uh, I, and I, people I, like the idea of it. So, I, is, uh, it, is he, is again, he just wrong? Again, is he just again, lying to us? It's not that he's lying, lying to, to anybody. Let's again look at the detail of that. This idea, which I hear so many times oh, this in business, you say no deal and walk away. But this isn't like a garage that I can walk to another garage and do deal with. This particular garage looks after 50% of my business that other people in my business want us to continue working with. Now, whether they've been difficult or not, whether we're frustrated or not, we still need to work with that particular garage, with the European Union. We still have to have some mm. form of relationship. And that's what we're missing in this debate. All these headlines gloss over the detail of our working relationship. And the biggest danger, a stress, is Northern Ireland. You walk away without a deal, where does that leave the very issue, the very issue that has prevented us from getting this through the line, prevented mm -hmm. Theresa May from getting it across the line? So has will been we, the Northern be, will we be gone in, by the 31st of October? Will we be out? No, I, do, I don't agree with that. It goes back to the next point, which is there's an absolute will in Parliament to try and get this through. If we don't get this through, our party will be finished for the next decade. And that's the bigger picture I hope that colleagues will focus on uh, as we uh, introduce a new prime minister in the next couple of days.